Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today we'll be doing our box office breakdown for this past weekend. I hope everyone had a wonderful and blessed Christmas but don't forget that we are still in the Christmas season for a bit longer as it is beyond just one day. But before going any further into our discussion of Spider-Man No Way Home, crushing the billion dollar mark in just its second week of release. Please make sure you smash that like button, light up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and also make sure you're subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on, that way you know every time a video or a live stream goes live on the channel. So as I said, I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend and a very Merry Christmas. Still have some family over. Hope you all enjoyed the video that was posted earlier today. Was able to find some time to do box office breakdowns. Just did one over for the Geeks and Gamers channel, which should be live either already or will be live soon, depending on timing and upload speeds and stuff like that. But with that being said, we've got a lot to talk about today. The big news, of course, is that Spider-Man No Way Home has completely destroyed the billion dollar mark. It is now, what, the second or third fastest film to reach the billion dollar mark and is one of only two films in the modern era to cross a billion dollars without working with the communist government in China. And so again, I, I, I give a huge call to Sony and I pray, Sony, please do not release this film in China. I know that you're thinking about the dollar signs, especially now that this film is clearly uh, profitable for you guys and it's just going to be extra money. Don't work with them. There's, there's no need to. You're going to be making almost a billion dollars by the end of everything with this movie. You, you can. You don't need any more money. Do not make a deal with the devil. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this news here. First off, from Deadline, as you can see from the headline, it's talking about how it dashes the billion dollar for pandemic era first and only film. Because here's the thing is that when they word it that way, saying it's the first film to do this, kind of makes you wonder and it kind of makes you, I think, uh, makes me at the very least a, a little antsy because it's almost as if they're saying, what do, what do you mean first and not only? Are you trying to say that the uh, pandemic era is going to be going on for a little bit longer than what was expected? Uh, I sure hope not, especially with everything that we are hearing as far as ways of treatment, etc. But... I digress. Spider-Man No Way Home, though, through Sunday, is already projected to have made $1.05 billion, which makes this Sony's second uh, highest grossing film of all time, only behind Spider-Man Far From Home, which it will easily pass in the next day or so which means this film is going to be Sony's largest film ever to release. So once again, that pandemic narrative, which has been used so often, will continue to be utterly destroyed, and it is an amazing thing to see that happen. This film also, because of how much it is made in the first two weeks of its release, is now very much on pace to be able to not just make $1.5 billion at least, but also could potentially get to $2 billion, especially if you remember that this film has not and will not release in Japan for another week or two, and that is because of a delayed release, and Japan is a pretty huge market for Spider-Man. There's a lot of Spider-Man fans in Japan it has usually been a a pretty uh, it was usually a, a pretty big market for Spider-Man, Spider-Man films in general. Speaking of other Spider-Man films, though, this film, No Way Home, is right now tracking 51% ahead of Far From Home, which was the last film in the Tom Holland Spider-Man era, and is 99% ahead in the similar markets at similar rates uh, ahead of uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, which, again, is just insane and really does speak to this film making $1.5 to $2 billion, being not just the highest grossing of the current era Spider-Man, Spider-Man films, but potentially the highest grossing Spider-Man film of all time, and I'll be doing a full breakdown of that, I'm sure, in the future, adjusting numbers for inflation and the such. As you can see, these are currently the top markets for this film, again, making lots of money in these various locations, breaking records as well. Uh, the top five markets, as it says right here, for... Uh, as far as Spider-Man is concerned, it says top five markets are Japan, Russia, UK, France, Mexico, Australia begins play today. So it looks like it's getting a little bit of a release, a smaller bit of release uh, as far as this is concerned. Um, 
But uh, uh, wait a minute. So sorry. Th- this is actually uh, sorry. Japan has not been released yet at all. This is instead another film that we're going to be talking about, which is Resurrections. So Resurrections had its best weekend debut in the UK, which was closed on Christmas Day with 3.9 million. Uh, France came in on par. Pandemic comp uh, Shang Chi. But I'm going to be honest. There's no way that this film is even going to reach Shang Chi levels uh, because Resurrections was just a complete and utter flop. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out as far as how far ahead this is uh, currently tracking ahead of other Spider-Man films. So going into the actual weekend numbers as they come in, right, this chart gets updated throughout the day. Uh, Right now, we can look and see Spider-Man No Way Home, to no surprise, is once again at number one this week at $81.5 million for the weekend, not including what it was able to make during the week itself. That's only a 70% drop. Remembering that this film made a good 30 to 20, 20 to 30 million dollars every day of this week, uh, that's still pretty impressive. A lot of people were off, and yet it still was able to make another 81.5, only a 70% drop. And that's a typical drop that you see for big budget films, especially big budget Sony or big budget Marvel films. And so the fact that it's not higher than that, and the fact that a lot of people want to go see this film during the week uh, kind of just again shows you how strong this film is playing not just with un- younger audiences but also with that key demographic that 18 and 34 demographic and how uh, probably a lot of repeat showings and repeat goings is, is you know what what that is doing for this film as well sing to another film that has come out where yeah it's a sequel to a movie that I don't think anyone realized that they ever really wanted. Uh, But anyway, from Universal, $23.7 million for that movie, making the total domestic gross 39.4. And Matrix Resurrections, and yes, that is correct. Number two was Sing 2 with $23.7 million, whereas Matrix Resurrections, only $12 million. So Sing 2, as far as The weekend is concerned, made twice as much as Matrix Resurrections did. And yes, you can blame HBO Max all you want, but hey, this is a film that you would expect people wanting to go see in theaters and on the biggest screen possible. It is a Matrix movie. But then you remember, oh wait, that's right, no one was asking for this film because the story ended, and the films in the first franchise didn't do that as well, and... Clearly, this is a movie that has an agenda to it because it is trying to rewrite and reclaim certain things from the original trilogy, specifically the red pill moment, but then it's also trying to rewrite it as well, turning it into an allegory for something that it was never an original allegory for, despite what the filmmakers and creators might actually want to say on the subject, but not just on the weekend, but in total, the domestic number for Sing 2 is, again, almost twice that of Resurrection, so this is yet another sign of another Warner Brothers release just not doing all that well. King Man, a uh, 20th Century Studios film, which has gone through so many, you know, reshoots and and delays, has only been able to cobble up around 6.3 million for the weekend in total. Though throughout the week, 10 million dollars. So again. Not looking very good for this film. Both of these movies, by the way, for Matrix and Kingsman, we do not have official box office uh, budgets yet for. As soon as that is in, I will put those into my chart. So stay tuned to OMBreviews.com for the box office tracking section to see what those numbers will be, hopefully, when they update. West Side Story, the movie that continues to just not make money because people don't care. Uh, Spielberg, imagining, might still be trying to blame the pandemic. Hey, a pretty strong drop there, 23%, but it's only made $23.9 million and is still set to be a massive of financial loss because no one cares and if you say it's not about making money i'm sorry but if you're spending 100 million dollars on a project yeah you're gonna want to make your money back at least and not be in the hole over 100 million dollars which is where this film currently stands encanto $2 million uh, there, again, is starting to lose theaters. Ghostbusters Afterlife, I will say, unfortunately, looks like the run for this film is pretty much dead on arrival. I was thinking that this film, this is where I was wrong, I was thinking this film might have some extra life over the holiday frame, but Spider-Man No Way Home clearly was able to take a lot of the demographic that would have gone to see this film instead, and even though a 64% drop uh, from you know week 5 to week 6 is, again, relatively strong, um, it is not nearly as good as, as, as had been expected. So this film will likely still end up in the red, but it luckily is close enough in its losses to make that up in Blu-ray and 4K sales. Eternals is, again, uh, pretty much dead. Uh, No surprise there. So again, this film is going to end up as another financial flop for the MCU to no one's surprise. Spider-Man No Way Home, though, has crossed a billion dollars. Again, $1.054 billion. It'll be $1.1 plus 
uh, billion. Again, it'll be the highest grossing MCU Spider-Man film or MCU related Spider-Man film ever because it's going to pass far from home in the next day or so. Sing 2, $64.2 million in total. So Resurrections, even though it is a little bit higher internationally than that of Sing 2, that is only because of the international numbers coming in. Still a far cry from what one would expect from a film like this. What we are not seeing is anything coming internationally at the very least for The King's Man. So once again, a film that looked actually pretty interesting, but a film that is just not performing at all. And uh, not would not be surprised that this film costs enough to where this is going to end up losing a lot of money. And speaking of losing money, there's West Side Story. Again, continuing not to make any money. And you can try and use the pandemic as an excuse all you want. But then I raise you a Spider-Man No Way Home, which made over a billion dollars. I raise you a Venom 2, which also had over $100 million in net gain and net profits. I also raise you that film making $10 million more than the first film in its opening weekend. And there are other examples that we can absolutely go to as well as far as films breaking even. So pandemic, again, narrative has been utterly destroyed. Looking at some of the box office chotting, because, yeah, we like to chot on this channel. Now that we have this number here for Spider-Man No Way Home, at $1 billion right now, my projections had the film making anywhere between $1.5 and $2.1 billion. The country that I think that's going to be worth watching here is Japan. If this film has a massive release and a massive run in Japan, $2 billion, I think, is going to be easily on the table. Either way, if this film does not even get to that number, we're looking at somewhere between $1.5 and $1.8 billion at least. And remember, this is all without communist China. If you add communist China to the mix, obviously this number gets that much bigger. But my hope is that Sony says, nope, we're already making massive profits. We don't need to work with the communist governments because guess what? It's minimum net gain. We're talking net gains here. So you're subtracting out what it costs to make, costs to market, the splits between theaters and studios, etc. You're looking at, at the very least, getting $603.7 million in net gain profits, upwards of 965, so could almost make a billion dollars in net gain, net profits, with the film right now sitting at well over $300 million in its net gain, net profit category. So again, doing incredibly well. I know a lot of people care a lot about the battle between Spider-Man and also that of the... Uh, you know, the other MCU films. By the way, this is just yet another one of my shots. You know, I like to do some shots. And turns out the Excel box office, unfortunately, does not, uh, you know, does not like to keep a lot of rows active. And so I have to use sheets for some of this stuff. But as far as the Spider-Man uh, battle going on right now, first off, let's talk about Sony. So Sony has made $1.5 billion for both of its films this year, Spider-Man No Way Home and Venom 2, whereas the entirety of the MCU, a paltry $1.2 billion dollars which means that this film is easily, and this franchise is easily, uh, the most profitable. In fact, for the entire Sony release, they've made $466.5 million in net gain, net profit, whereas the entire MCU has had around a $98 million loss when everything is said and done. However, what's interesting to me is that Spider-Man No Way Home is on pace to actually make the MCU, since it is an MCU-adjacent film, actually profitable this year. But then you remind yourself, oh wait, that's right, Disney still had other massive losses outside of the MCU and will likely, therefore, still have well into the hundreds of millions of dollars in net losses because of those numbers. What is also, again, impressive and easy thing for us to, important for us to remind ourselves, the 75% take that Sony gets means right now in net gain profit territory, it's made $250 million, whereas Disney has made 83.1. So for those that say that split doesn't matter, or it's an MCU film these profit margins would say differently. Also, one important thing that Sony is doing that Disney did not do for their theaters was, hey, Sony is actually getting a lot of money for theaters. So remember that theaters typically get around 40% of the entire box office by the end of its run. So we're looking at Sony giving the theaters $621 million by the end of the run of this film, whereas Disney, $484.6 million. So again, three films able to do that, two films able to do this. Uh, so yeah, pretty darn impressive and something that, once again, cannot be forgotten. Also, if we look at just this film by itself, this film, Spider-Man No Way Home, is likely because of that $1.5 to $2 billion 
total result by the end, at least that was based on my projections. And the $1.2 billion that has been made by the MCU in total means that this one film is going to overshadow the entirety of the MCU. And you can continue to make all the excuses all you want. It doesn't matter to me in the slightest because facts don't care about your darn feelings. What is interesting, though, is as we saw uh, films like No Way Home actually doing better than a film like Infinity War. Again, I've been kind of following this battle a bit. Uh, Infinity War has definitely made up some ground in its second weekend numbers here. Again, the numbers for No Way Home not being as impressive, but reminding ourselves that Friday, of course, was Christmas Eve and we had Christmas Day. Impressive numbers, to say the very least, but even with it not doing as well as Infinity War, guess what? Still tracking ahead of Infinity War, even when you adjust for inflation and demolishing all of the other MCU films that were released during, again, summertime in the case of Black Widow. So this is, again, incredibly impressive for this film and means that this film very much going to be on pace to keep track with an Infinity War domestically. It's made over $587 million internationally, so it'll soon be the highest grossing international release in the United States, in North America. Uh, very much uh, soon going to be passing up a film like uh, No Time to Die. So this film, again, easily going to not just as the billion dollar film that it is, but also you could potentially see it even actually and I can't believe I'm saying this, could actually make more than Avengers Infinity War. If it has and reaches that higher end total, which is a lot harder to do because it means you have to have a very strong holdover. And as I said, that's going to really rely, in my opinion, on Japan and how well it does there. But the fact that it's even in the discussion that No Way Home could actually make as much or more or get close to the total of Infinity War during a pandemic, nonetheless is impressive to say the very least. But what are y'all's thoughts? Are you surprised Spider-Man No Way Home has already reached a billion dollars again? Crossed this pretty much yesterday uh, over Christmas uh, as we are continuing to uh, follow these numbers and as we are continuing to wait for some of these box office updates internationally as well. Uh, it is crazy impressive. And also, let me know in the, in the, in the, uh, in the comments below, do you think this film is going to make it $2 billion? A lot of people, when I was asking the question about a billion, were like, it's not going to do it, it's not going to do it. And guess what it did? I think $2 billion is now definitely on the table for this movie. It's going to be hard, but with a $1.5 billion floor, uh, sky is the limit, really, for this film. Let me know that, and also let me know how much money you think Matrix Resolution, you know, Resurrections, rather, not Revolutions, Resurrections is, is going to do, because remember, we don't have an actual official production budget. Right now, I'm basing this off of previous Matrix releases, so $150 million is either going to be the budget, or it could be a little higher, a little, a little you know, a little lower than that, uh, but based on that, this film right now is sitting at around, yeah, $183 million in the red. Sing 2, we do have a production budget for 85 million dollars there so 119 million dollars in the red so again these are numbers that have not yet been updated but they are updated here 88 million dollars 143 million dollars lost for the king's man which also we don't have a production budget given for so 100 million dollars was the best guess based off of previous king's men releases also so do you think resurrections is going to somehow make its money back i I can't see that happening. And uh, let me know your thoughts about this and any of the other films I talked about. The comment section below, as I said, also Ghostbusters Afterlife right now is sitting around $6 million in the red. So again, enough for the film to be able to make its money back in Blu-ray and 4K sales. Just like a similar story can be said for a film like Dune, which is $11.4 million in the red, could also make that up in 4K Blu-ray sales. As again, these films are getting those releases in January on physical media. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this video, smash that like button, like that fire button getting this bonus video today you're all amazing and beautiful people hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and as always god bless And now for a huge shout out to all of my December Patreon subscribe star and locals members, animation commentator, Brandon, Brian P, Christopher Bowman, Dolores Ed, Dion, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to You Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Hannibal Grimm, Harold Francis, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeff Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle 79, Laura, the Modern Major General's Story, Mike Jackson, times four, 
Mitch Dunaway, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody, Mondo Spieler, On to June, Orange Chat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Allen, Stan Andrian, Teresa Martin, Theodore Menden, and Tina Bojan, and of course, the Empress of the Universe, Tina B. Thank you very much for being my Patreon members. And for my subscribe star members, UAB Mad Dog, Max Mike Jackson, Storm Tracker, The R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, Stan 4, John B, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, Slash, the new number two, J. Rod, the Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank you very much for supporting me on Subscribestar and to my four members over on Locals.com Kara Tharp, UAB Mad Dog, once again, Mike Jackson. Bifford a Hobbit, and Robert Barnes. Thank you for supporting me on Locals, and if you want to have your name shouted out at the end of every video and live stream, check out the top link in the video description below. It's called Willow, or W.L.O. Willow Link. It'll bring you to all of my social media platforms, and also to all of the various other locations that you can support the channel. You can get access to things like giveaways, where I do giveaways of 4K films, 4K steelbooks, digital codes, all kinds of stuff every single month. Also, also, there's a level where you get access to all of that, plus an exclusive podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger, where you also get to ask questions that we will answer on every episode of the podcast. And at the final level, you also have the ability, the chosen of Valhalla level, you have the ability to have all of that, plus in your first month, get a free t-shirt of your choice, any color sent anywhere in the world, and also you get to be featured once a month on the chosen of Valhalla live stream featured on the main channel. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the description. You're all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.